Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Christmas Day program here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, normally, because this is a Tuesday this year, normally we would call this our Tract and Truth Tuesday, but it's Christmas, and so we're going to honor this celebration of the fact that God Almighty took on flesh and dwelt among us, and that is the story of Christmas, is it not? My Bible is open to the very familiar story in Luke chapter 2. I'm going to read some verses today. I'm going to read you an article about the missed gift that I wrote some years ago. I'm going to tell you about a gospel tract, and uh, that's going to be a a full day just there in and of itself. Now, today, perhaps you are listening because you have the opportunity to listen because it's Christmas and you have a day off of work. If that's you, thank you for listening. Maybe you are working in the kitchen getting food prepared for a big family meal, and uh, just tell me what time to be there and give me an address, and I'd love to join you. Perhaps you are up and your body is used to getting up earlier, and so since you didn't have to go to work, your body said it's still time to get up and you're having your first morning cup of coffee. Whatever the case may be, if this is your unique time to listen to us, normally we study the Word of God, but it's Christmas Day, and without any apology, I'm going to be reading here from the Gospel of Luke, and then I'm going to talk to you about a gospel tract and read a story to you. Familiar verses, familiar words out of the Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Here is the Christmas story. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one, into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill towards men. What a tremendous entrance into the world. This passage relates to us concerning our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Bible Tract Echoes, in case you are a new listener, Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm, as my announcer has said, of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated. We publish gospel tracts, and that simply is a an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. That's what a gospel tract is. It's a tool that enables us to extend our personal gospel witness far beyond just those that we 
tell the gospel with our mouth. We can hand the gospel. We can leave the gospel on a counter someplace, in a restroom, in a restaurant, whatever the case may be. We can leave the gospel, hand the gospel to a clerk. We can extend, as I said, far beyond our ability to verbally tell the gospel to just a limited amount. We can expand that by five times at least by handing out gospel tracts. I want to send you a free sample packet of our gospel tracts, which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. One of those is this one, which simply asks the question, what about eternal life? What about eternal life? Isn't that what Christ came to give to us who are sinners deserving of hell? Did he not come to give us the gift of eternal life? Well, how do we get it? That's exactly what this gospel tract does. What about eternal life? It says in here, in part, eternal life is presented as a gift. That's the way we offer it to sinners. We offer it that way here on the radio. When we go out personally tell them the gospel, we offer the eternal life as a gift through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd love for you to to have these gospel tracts. Would you let me do that, please? At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you some ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Please do that. And again, that sample packet is free. You can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org, and there you can ask for the sample packet, giving us your name and address. Well, years ago, I wrote this article, a number of people took it, and they asked us every now and again if we would retell the story, and the story goes like this. It's simply entitled, The Missed Gift. It says, a year years ago, a family was confronting their Christmas season while dealing with hard times. The dad was out of work and had been for some time. The mom was working in a minimum wage job, and somehow they managed to put together a happy Christmas day for their children. A parental love and a few decorations can do marvelous things. Well, the day after Christmas, the dad was once again out job hunting. Mom was back to work, too, and the children, who are now old enough to be left home alone, they began to busy themselves with the chores which Mom had given to them, and one of the girls was sorting through the leftover wrapping materials that had been there as things were unwrapped. It was then that she found an envelope with the dad's name on it. Well, that night, Dad opened his envelope, and inside was a sizable check. Somehow or another, this envelope containing the greatest gift that they could have gotten that Christmas had slipped by without being even noticed or opened. Well, friend, that is what happens Christmas after Christmas. In the midst of our efforts to make, I put that words in quotation marks, to make Christmas a joyous as we can, we easily miss the most significant gift of all. Some 2,000 years ago, the most priceless gift ever was presented to men. That gift was the Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the Lord. When the angels pronounced the good news to the shepherds, their message was not simply about a person. That person was the message. The angel said, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The article goes on to talk about the need. The need of people's hearts calls for us to have a priceless gift. That envelope contained a valuable gift to the entire family due to their need. They were in hard times financially, but beloved, all men, women, and children are in hard times and places spiritually because all of us are hopelessly dead in trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2, 1 says. That dad may find a job, and he began to provide for his family, but you and I can do nothing to provide the answer to our sin debt and the guiltiness we have before God. That is a need that we can never meet on our own. But there's a gift. The amount of God's gift is shown up by its pricelessness. No matter how sizable that check was in the dad's envelope, it would obviously eventually be used up. But the gift of God's son can never be emptied. 
The Lord is, what Psalm 103 says, plenteous in mercy. There is no end to God's grace. There's no end to God's forgiveness of sin, but there needs to be a suffering. The depth of Jesus' suffering as he was beaten and then crucified reveals the priceless value of God's gift. The sinless life of Jesus was a life of magnificent beauty, but for his gift of forgiveness to be available to us, his body, his physical body, had to be broken. No, 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 no bones were broken. The Bible is clear about that. But he was broken so that the priceless blood could be spilled out and be the sin offering that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But he was our substitute The pricelessness of the gift of Jesus is also seen in that he gave his life willingly for sinners. In the book of 2 Corinthians and chapter 5, we have these words, He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. The pure and undefiled Son of God gave himself in our place. He paid our sin debt, but why? The rest of that verse that I just read goes on to say this. Well, let me read the whole verse. 2 Corinthians 5.21, He, the Father, made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus died to make us righteous before God. Not that we could just be, we had to be made righteous. If Jesus died to make us righteous, then we are not righteous without him. We are sinners without him. We are all unrighteous in our actions, our words, our thoughts, and definitely in our heart motives. But no religiousness, no goodness done by us could ever cleanse us down to the level of our heart motives, now could it? As you and I plan to enjoy the Christmas day, do not let the gift of Jesus slip past you due to the busyness of this day. Send this gift of eternal life to somebody else who needs him. The Father's envelope was small, but it contained the family's greatest gift. Why not put a gospel tract in an envelope and send it out? It may not be valued the day that it reaches its destination, but no gospel message sent out can ever return void. On that we have God's promise. Simple story, isn't it? A simple story that you and I can both understand and see in our mind's eye how a family struggling, putting together the best Christmas they can, particularly for the children, and all the wrappings are there, and yet in the midst of that, a great gift get bottled up and baggaged up into the wrapping. The good news for the family in the story, the envelope was found. My dear friend, God sent his son into the world that anyone who would by faith receive him would have the gift of eternal life. But sometimes in the religious world, there's so much hubbub and religious ceremony that the gift of Jesus Christ, him being the salvation story himself, gets lost in the wrappings of religion. Sometimes it gets lost in the wrapping of morality. Oh, friend, have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, or do you have religious ceremony? You may have been baptized, but you've never received Jesus as your Savior. God the Father made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we could be made righteous. If you do not have Christ, you're not righteous. Receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.